Hey, joining us now on the Mar Army Rock Show, I'm very excited to have uh, Daryl Treese Birch from the incredible band Ten from the UK. Man, I'm so excited to, to hear more about this album. Daryl, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Delighted to be here. Thank you. So first, give us a little bit about you. Now, it's a band with a pretty long history, and you've been, if I do my math right, in the band since 2011. So how did they find you? What were you doing, and how did you get pulled into the band? Uh, um, I was I was utilizing the studio that, that Gary owned in my hometown, where, where, you know, where a band I was in at the time was using. So I guess he, he had his peepers out on me and was listening to what I was doing when I was with those guys. Um, and that was actually a Rush tribute band, <laughs> as, as well as as well as some original stuff. I, I you know I was doing myself, but uh, and I'm still with that, that that tribute as well because you know that that started ten years ago, um, just as as an original band sort of fell away, and and a few of us just went, why don't we just do some covers for a laugh? So and anyway, we all loved Rush, so we just we did Rush, and we've 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 never stopped. To be fair, we can't <laughs> stop playing it. So <laughs> so yeah, he he, um, he he was listening through the booth, no doubt, and. Um, we became friends anyway when, when you know I was using his building, so so that was fine. Uh, and I was um, with uh, you know two two friends of mine. Um, I, I was the, the the lesser person in the in the triage, if you will, but <laughs> one of the organisers of, of the Fleetwood Stock charity event that happened every year, uh, and ten had been booked. Um, so I I was part of the. The, the group, if you will, that booked 10 <laughs> in, in 2007, I think it was, or, or 2005, 2007. So, you know, I, I'd seen them, seen them actually with Paul, the previous keyboard player. In actual fact, the last time they played when I wasn't in the band, Paul used my keyboards, <laughs> which is rather bizarre, but hey, you know, very cool. So, you know, nice bloke. Yeah, so that's how I, that's how I, I came into the band. Paul, Paul uh, was was poorly, um, and uh, you know he, he, he left, and uh, they were they were obviously short of a keyboard player, and they actually had Fleetwood stock booked and coming up fast as oh, well. Wow. So you know <clears> I, I had a uh, which we booked for on, on the third showing of the band, and um, that was on the back of the Storm Morning album, which unfortunately I wasn't on, but. You know, I was very thankful to be able to play a load of them live. So, um, you know, I actually joined on that tour, if you will. So, so yeah. you know, a lot of times when a band adds a keyboard player to it, it's to fill in some sound and make it a bigger full sound. But you guys have seven people in the band. So tell me about the role of a keyboard player in a band with that many members. Like, is it different than being in, like, your Rush band, you know, with three people? Uh, well, I mean, well, to be fair, in, in, the, in the Rush tribute it's four of us anyway because uh yeah i mean <coughs> sorry the 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 bassist plays uh, sings but uh you know the real band rush uh trigger an awful lot of keyboards uh, um with, with click tracks and whatnot i mean i know getty plays quite a bit live but right. most most of it is all triggered um and is almost backing really i think they may <coughs> they may have some guys actually playing backstage as well but i'm not entirely certain about that um but there's four of us in, in, in that particular band anyway. But in this regard, um, keyboards are a massive part of what Gary does. You know, it's 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 a it's an integral part of the of the soundscape that Gary creates anyway. Um, I guess there was a little not in, funnily enough, not from my point of view, but um, I remember John saying quite early on that he, he was a little worried about you know not not from having another colleague you know joining him with guitars. But just from will will that swamp the keyboards? You know, yeah. would be, you know the point. But you know, at the end of the day, if if you orchestrate it right, and everyone does the bits where they need to do the bits, and don't just swamp it with lots and lots of layers of, of all everyone doing the same rhythm part, for instance, there's no reason why why everything can't have its place and sit nicely within you know, with, within the scape of the music. Uh, the, the keyboards are very prominent anyway. That's the way Gary writes them. Now, before we get into talking about Albion, too, I have one more keyboard player question. So, like, when, when a song's being written, because you can do virtually almost anything with a keyboard, how do you make the decision what the sound's going to be like? Because, you know, I hear a tune, uh, you know, on your album that has one sound to it and then another that's totally different. How do you pick it, at, like, when the tune, it's alive, has a totally different sound? Than all the others, how do you decide? It's, it's alive. It's, it's, it's they're quite bonkers 
you know, wangy bar sort of thing going on the on, on the vibrato on, on the monosynth there. Um, Gary, Gary had already, um, you know, he, he records these songs and he'll have demo versions of them with keyboard sounds that he's, you know, programmed himself, if you will. It's very basic and, it, and it's, it's not got all the detail in that that, you know, a keyboard player would add add later on and, and redo obviously um, so he had something for that but it wasn't anything like the one that, that I went with in the end and he, he, he's very very Gary's very very open to just letting you just run with, with whatever you feel so you know I'll, I'll listen to the demos and I'll just say well, this, this reminds me of this sort of thing or I, I feel you try to tell this sort of story so how about this sound <coughs> and, and the vast majority of sounds that I dabble with um, I mean there's gazillions of presets in my, my synths anyway but I tend to write my own I, I tend to like something being rather unique and a little bit you know particular to you so um, I'll find something that I like and then I'll tweak it further and, and combine it with other sounds and try and create something that I really like the actual vibrato heavy vibrato on that was actually more Gary than me to be fair he really wanted that wild and wacky sort of <laughs> sound going off and I was pulling back from that and he was pushing me forward on it <laughs> so no, no it's, it's, um, it's a combination of both him and, and I you know Agreeing on, on, on what's what's best for it, really. No, no way does he does he dictate that this needs this and this needs that. So, um, the the new album's called Albion, and uh, I had to actually look it up. Being over here in the states, I didn't know the history of the name, but now I know it. And uh, is it actually a tribute to the UK? And it's like a historical tribute, or is it is it any kind of roots of the UK embedded in those lyrics? Certainly in the lyrics, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, the cover itself's got Bodicea on the front of it, although I'm not sure she looks like that. <laughs> uh, back, uh, back on the, in the 7th century, whenever it might have been. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the Albion name, uh, I guess, would be from the Angles. You know, where England came from was, was the word of the Angles, and that was long before Saxons, you know, came in. And we're talking, I guess we're talking probably 6th century and before that. I'm not really a, a, a history buff. But certainly from, from Gary's writing perspective, I know he likes to, to delve into mythological stuff and historical stuff uh, combined. And particularly anything historical. Practically every album's got something on it with <laughs> historical um, significance or storyline in there. Um, and yeah, when he, when he was, obviously we had the Red song from from the, back in the day uh, and that's that's just a fantastic sort of Scottish you know <laughs> rooted in brave if you will you know um, uh, I forget the, the film now with Mel Gibson in it now was it Braveheart Braveheart yeah Braveheart yeah, yeah. Um, so you know that's that's got those roots embedded in it, and I guess we wanted an English counterpart to it, really. <laughs> um, and, and certainly the lyrics are, are are based around that that you know historical time. Unless I miss something, it's been a little while since we've seen a ten music video. Is there anything in the works for this album? Uh, well, I guess we'd like to. Um, at the minute, it's, <clears throat> it's I guess it's all down to the the new you know label that's actually promoting the band. Um, I believe there was something in the pipeline for, for one of the songs off the album, but uh, there, there wasn't anything totally agreed at the time. We were just going to release it and see how we go. I, th I think what will actually happen is because we're moving into the, into the second album stages now already, um, you know, Albion's only just come out and we're still promoting it, but we're already getting set for, for the second one coming out. <laughs> and I think what will happen, because you know, on the back of two releases, actually it'll be something from the second album that we'll, we'll be aiming for, particularly since this one, is, is doing so well um, and, and it's, it's, you know it's, it's been a, a move on from the, the success of Storm Warning moving into Heresy and Creed and this again it's all been a bit of a ball rolling really so uh, everything's caught momentum and it's, it's doing good yeah I, I was looking so, back at the Facebook page and all over the globe man you guys are getting reviews literally from around the world and um, is there one country that has risen to the top other than the UK but other another country that's really like wow this country latched onto this record uh 
I'm not. I'm not. I couldn't tell you the, the, the honest answer to that. I mean, it, it seems like for all of the <coughs> European <coughs> countries that have been strong with us anyway, in Spain and Italy, for instance, are, are as much the same. Greece included. Um, but for me, I guess it would be the states in some respects because I, I haven't been hearing a great deal of you know of, of um, noise coming out of out of America. Uh, in the last few years, and then this album's happened, and all of a sudden that seems to be a little bit more heavier than what it was. So, um, if anything, that's been a real blessing, you know. Is that, <laughs> that, that's been, that, you know, that's been happening. Um, I think Japan's been a little bit more vocal as well on this album than, than on Heresy and Creed. That might have something to do with with the way Frontiers were promoting it, though. To be fair, because I'm not so, I'm not so sure that um, Heresy was released in the states. I think you had to you know import it in. I think um, you're right, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think with it being released the way it has been um, with Rocktopia has, has obviously been a massive benefit. Yeah, now so. Albion you can pick up on Amazon over here in the States, so that's a good thing for people listening to go out and pick that up. Um, right. Have you? And I saw you guys have done like a, a bazillion festivals around the world. Have you done a U.S. festival, S10? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I wish, yeah. Yeah, we got to get you over here. There's there's some great 80s style, like, uh, melodic rock kind of stuff going on, especially with the Monsters of Rock Cruise and stuff like that. I would love to see you guys as part of the Monsters of Rock Cruise. Yeah, no, if, if, if something came up like that and, you know, and, and, and everything all tied together and the timing was, was obviously right, we'd, we'd be over there like a shot, every one of us. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that wouldn't be an issue at all. Every, everyone's up for that sort of thing. Now, you, are you guys a band that's real spread out? Are you all from the same area? or Because or, I know the band like lists Manchester, but are, are you all all over the place where you live? Well, it's interesting that, that uh, you know, obviously Manchester was listed because... Gary's from Manchester, and you know the the, the birth uh, of, of the band was was in Manchester, and and you know him and Vinny and etc. Were, were all from that area. But Gary lives up near me, near Blackpool. Or he lives in Blackpool. I live just outside Blackpool, so actually we're we're the closest to each other. I mean, in in, in states terms, I guess we're we're all neighbours, you know. Right. But, um, you know, as far as this country is concerned, we we're actually a little spread apart. To be quite fair. But it's it's only two hours drive. So it's not bad, yeah. Two hours drive, but it's nothing, is it? At the end of the day, Um, you can get stuck in that just in a city centre, couldn't you? So, (laughs) (laughs) Um, so hey, with uh, spring coming up, are we uh, any hope for? Is there going to be a ten tour? I saw Gary has a date, a solo date out in Greece already listed. Uh, Are you guys going to do a tour? Well, that 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 gig's a double header. In actual fact, we're we're playing. You know, I'm playing obviously as part of the acoustic setup. Um, on the Friday evening and then the night after we're playing with the electric show was 10 uh, and it's actually a, kind of a hope that that sort of thing happens wherever we go to because it, it's rather useful to go out for three or four days um, do an acoustic show because you know until the, until the one we'd just done at Firefest at, at Nottingham um, for, for Gary U's solo stuff he'd, he'd never played them live Oh, you know, wow. all these years, it's, it's nuts. Um, I guess he played them just before 10 was formed, you know, with some of those earlier yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but since the formation of 10, he hadn't done any of them, so it, it was a real crying shame that those songs hadn't been heard live. I know it's in an acoustic setting rather than an electric one, but it's still still being played live. Um, and it was such a success that, you know, we wanted to take that further. So, um, I mean, when, when we played in, in, in uh, Spain and in, in Greece, um, Last year, the year before, we kind of did an acoustic set the night before anyway. But it was just two, you know, two guitarists and then Gary singing in a, in a jam for six or seven songs, you know, just as a freebie in some pub close by, you know, <laughs> which was really nice and you get to see everybody. But this is a little bit more organised, a bit more professional, for want of a better word, you know. So yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully. Well, we'll definitely. They're, they're all working on them now behind the scenes. You know, I'm not privy to what happens. It's, give, give me the give me the official date when it's happening, and I'll. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's horrible speculating because you can't you kind of get your hopes, you know, set up, and uh, you know something's going to pan up. That's that's written down, and it, and it doesn't pan out for whatever reason. Yeah, it happens all the time. Feeling let down then, so I try not to uh, <laughs> learn about it until it's happening. Well, the name of the album is called Albion. You can pick it up here in the states on Amazon. And uh, Daryl Treese Birch, thanks so much for being here on the Marmy Rock Show. It's been a pleasure talking to you, my friend. I really hope to see you guys live someday. 
Oh, please, absolutely. It'd be a pleasure. It'd be good to meet you in person. Thanks, man. Thanks for being on the show.